Okay, now on to some slightly more um, advanced things in Battle. Um, you have, uh, let's, say, let's say this unit here. Um, if they had lost one more guy, let's kill this guy here. Control K. That's always amusing to me. Um, and again, this counts as terrain now, so you have to shift, shift click if you want to get rid of a blood splatter. Um, but why would you want to get rid of a blood splatter, right? Um, so uh, these guys here now, let's say they lost three guys, so they have to take a leadership check. So what you can do is you click dice, and there's 1d6, one 2d6, one 5d6, 10d6, there's d6 plus d6, and just whatever number of d6 you need. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click 2d6, or a d6 plus d6 rather, because this will actually add them together for me, because I'm lazy. And d6 plus d6, I rolled a 7, so they're good. Um, if you're going through difficult terrain, you do 2d6, and you can look at the two results and pick the highest. Um, so there's quite a few things there that are really useful. Um, these to hit to wounds, the to hit penetrate, these kinds of things are really nifty. There's uh, deep strike mat, uh, mishap up here, which will tell you delayed, you know, 5 to 6 delayed. Um, and there's this thing here called army list. There's scenario, so you can type out all the things about the scenario you're playing. Um, public, if um, depends on if your lists are public or not. Private, which I think only the two players can see. And then there's delayed. And delayed is really good if you want to do like a list, like say Mike. Um, uh, Necron list. It's a really good spot for stuff like your army list. And then you can put your stuff in here, like I've got 10 warriors. You know, let's just say that's my whole list. So you click OK, and now this is delayed. Um, what this means is that your opponent and the observers, no one else can see this. Um, all they can see when they click delayed is that there is something here called Necron List, but they can't see what's in it. Um, in order to um, reveal what's in it, you click Reveal, and it'll put the little check mark, check mark here, and then um, the opponents will be able to see it. Um, so, but not until you actually reveal it, which is really awesome. So you can have um, delayed scenarios coming in. You can have um, like your list up there while your opponent's still making his list without having to worry about them making their list to your list. And then you click Save. So that's one really cool thing. Um, there's also um, up here, Player 1 and Player 2. Um, sorry, if you can't see the Player 1 and Player 2. So Player 1 here. This is basically like a box. It's, it's essentially a box for you. And what you can do is you, you can take all your stuff for player one, highlight these guys, and you can keep them in here. This is like a little storage unit. And you can close it, and uh, player one, and you got your guys in the box here. So you can keep your reserves in here, you can set up your army in there before, you, uh, before the game starts. So it's just like a nice little storage area for your guys. Um, there is also quite a few more features here, let me zoom out. Um, there's, they've got like fire, retreating, these kinds of things if you, if you need to put it on here to, to, to tell your opponent what's happening. They have rulers, which of course you can rotate as normal. Um, with the, shift. yeah, uh, pivot, yeah. So you can rotate these rulers like you can any other object in here to measure the 12 inches. There's also a 6 inch ruler. Um, there's a flamer template, and you can rotate that just like other objects also. Seeing, it's, a, it's definitely really nifty. Um, there's things here to represent uh, different things. There's movement paths, which I'm probably going to start using in future games just to show who moved where, because um, I think that'll be pretty useful. There's the objective markers, which um, count as terrain, so you have to shift click these, but, uh, so you can get, kind of look at the little flag ones. And then uh, down below the table there's some more stuff, if I can get below the table. Okay, so there's a turn counter down here too, and you can mess with that, you can uh, right click uh, next fight turn, and you'll advance through. Um, there's a scatter die, now the scatter die has to be one of my favorite features. So. Let's say we've got uh, this blast template, putting it on this Necron warrior here, and I've got my scattered eye. Set it right on the guy, right click, and roll dice, 
now the, it comes up with an arrow, and then I'm going to go ahead and take my dice, my 2d6, or actually I can roll d6 plus d6, so 8 inches, minus my ballistic skill 4, so this little die is going to scatter 4 inches. So let me take the die here, and 1, 2, 3, 4, and it goes right in the direction the arrow is pointing, and then you just put the template over it. Super easy. If you need to, you can zoom in to see who's underneath this thing. So um, it's really, it's really convenient. I really like a lot of the things like that in this. Um, you also have on multiple wound models. Um, you can click right click. Um, you can click wounds. How many wounds have they taken? So I put a one on there. And now if we zoom in. They'll put a little one next to them so you can keep track of how many wounds they've taken. You can also give them model information. This includes things like I is Necron. You can just say random things in there. You can say that they're the squad leader. Um, and if you come up here to, sorry I'm moving kind of fast, but there's a lot of information to cover. Um, like say to the squad leader right here, if you hold your mouse over to say Space Marine Veteran um, with a close combat weapon and pistol. Right click, go down to, uh, you can give them a plasma pistol or click next weapon. It'll give them a power sword now. Give them the next weapon again. Now he's got I think a power fist. Yeah. So power fist, you can even change the heads on this one. Cycle heads. So now he's got a helmeted head. Um, vehicles can do the same kind of thing. Um, give it a uh, different turret weapon. So now it's got the last cannons. Um, you can do armor facing to see uh, what's on what side. I mean there's all sorts of things you can do here. Um, you can add on a bulldozer. Bam! Bulldozer. And one more thing I want to show you. Actually a few. Um, you can click smoke. If you pop smoke. Click smoke again to unpop smoke. You can uh, make it wrecked which puts on some dark smoke. Um, Land Raider here. You can do things like immobilize and it'll put on the little immobilize symbol. You can make it uh, shaken or stunned or whatever. It puts on the symbols there. Do it again it becomes stunned. And then do it again and it says it's destroyed. So um, there's all sorts of great things you can do with all the vehicles here. You can change their weapons. Um, quite a bit of stuff. Okay, on to what will probably probably be the last few things in this particular video. Um, let's see, if you right click on this vehicle here, this is one of my favorite features. Um, go down to two door radius, and it actually puts out all of the areas in which you can disembark from the vehicle. So, um, so long as part of your base is touching this, like if these guys were disembarking, um, they can go all over in here. And uh, it's, it's really, really helpful to tell um, if the guys are actually in or not. Um, no stupid measuring and stuff. It's, it's really easy. I really like that feature about it. And then, of course, to turn off, just click two-door radius again, and it goes away. Um, drop pods and rhinos. Their doors actually open up, which is really sweet. Um, I'm not sure if these oh, this ones do do click doors. All the doors open up. How cool is that? Um... And just a few last things here. You can remove condition to get rid of uh, anything you've put on it. Um, let's see. Okay, as far as these Necron Warriors are concerned, um, this is one thing that you can also really do that I's, I'm, I was really impressed with. I didn't think I would have it. Control B, or you can right click and click it. Um, it changes the slot of base on it so you can change um, the color of it. And there's a ton of different colors to choose from so you can help differentiate squads and everything. Um, so it's, it's a really nice feature they've got there. Um, now on to what will probably be the last thing here. Let's see. Okay, so now one of the last things here that I'm going to go over is Snapshot. Snapshot takes a picture of the battlefield. 
Um, even if you're zoomed way in, it'll take a picture of the whole battlefield. And um, I'm just going to type this as like test, and then you're going to have to put .jpg or .png after it, something like that. So .png, save it, and it'll save the, the screenshot. And then um, on my desktop is test, and let's preview that. And there you go. So it's got the battlefield at that time on here. Um, that's pretty much all I've got. Thank you for watching. And, um, of course, let me know if you have any questions about anything additional in the game or if uh, there's anything that I kind of went over too quick. Um, just be sure to let me know. Thanks for watching.